Hey there, my name is Martin Bolin. Today I'm going to talk to you about the descending tracks that make up the spinal cord. Here are the objectives for this video. After watching this, you should be able to identify the location of major descending axonal tracks in the spinal cord. You should be able to describe the functions of the lateral cortical spinal tract. And finally, you should be able to identify and describe the mototopy of the lateral cortical spinal tract. So this is a histological preparation of the cervical spinal cord. Axons of myelin are stained black, as you can see here, while locations with lots of cells remain lightly stained because there's not a lot of myelin. So this is the ventral horns of the spinal cord that contain a lot of uh, motor neurons. In the cervical spinal cord, there's a lot of gray because there's a lot of motor neurons that are needed to control the muscles in the arms. There's a lot of black because there's a lot of descending and ascending axons that are traveling to and from lower spinal levels. Since we're talking about the axonal tracks in this video, we'll be focused primarily on the black areas. When we're talking about the descending tracks, these are tracks that are generally considered to be motor in function while the informa uh, with information traveling down the spinal cord from the brain. The first track is the lateral cortical spinal tract. I'm going to get my pen. And so the lateral cortical spinal tract is located just about here. And here. So this is the first major tract to be aware of. This contains axons of open motor neurons whose cell bodies are in the lower or in the motor cortex in the precentral gyrus. Um, so axons can in here. And lower motor neurons sitting in the ventral horns are who are receiving uh, input from these guys. So you can imagine axons coming out, and hit, uh, synapsing on lower motor neurons in the ventral horn, and then these guys go out and invade muscles in the peripheral tissue. Just ventral to the uh, lateral cortical spinal tract and slightly overlapping is the rubra spinal tract. So the rubra spinal tract is right about here. And right about here. And these axons are traveling from the red nucleus and down the spinal cord. Next is the anterior corticospinal tract. And that's right here and here. And then lastly, the medial longitudinal fasciculus and tectospinal tract. So the medial longitudinal fasciculus. It's not really considered a decent in track, but it's overlapping with tectospinal fibers, which are um, traveling down the spinal cord. Okay. So this uh, is just a drawing to review what we've talked about. And the, again, you can see the four major descending tracks. One, lateral corticospinal. Two, rubrospinal. Three, anterior corticospinal. And four, medial longitudinal fasciculus and then the tectospinal tract within as well. So next is looking at the corticospinal tract and the mototopy. So at cervical levels, you have uh, all the axons of upper motor neurons coming down uh, and contained within the lateral corticospinal tract. At cervical levels, the motor neurons for controlling the upper extremity come out and invade the motor neurons like we talked about in the previous slide, but also for more lateral are the thoracic motor, uh, neuron axons. And so these upper motor neuron axons, they're traveling down to the levers in the spinal cord. And as you can see here, at the cervical levels, you have the upper extremity, the trunk, and then the lower extremity. So these upper motor neuron axons. And so here, these axons are gonna be traveling down to the trunk. So at trunkal levels, these guys are coming out and lower extremity axons continue to descend to the lumbar and sacral levels. And here, these axons are coming out to innervate leg muscles. So this is, exemplifies the, the clinical relevance of understanding the top, topographical anatomy of the spinal cord. This is a photomicrograph showing the tumor growing within the vertebral column that is progressively pushing the cervical spinal cord uh, right here. You can pause this video for a second and write down the progression of symptoms you would expect to find now that you are familiar with the descending tracks of the spinal cord.
So this tumor is causing a lesion that starts by compressing the outer lateral edge of the spinal cord in the gray area. So primarily affecting the upper motor, um, this would primarily affect the upper motor neurons of this patient in the lower right extremity, and this is indicated by the gray area. So this patient may come into your clinic first complaining about muscle weakness in their right leg, and they may feel like their leg is moving slower than it used to. They may have muscle spasms, and when you test them, they may have a positive Babinski sign, an increase in deep uh, tendon reflex. And then over time, as the tumor continues to progress and grow, you'd have the same motor uh, effects at trunk levels, shown in the pink region. And then over greater time, as the tumor increases in size, the lesion will extend um, to the region in red, which is for the uh, upper extremity uh, motor neurons, axons. So here's a reminder of the objectives. You will recall that the major descending tracts of the spinal cord include the lateral corticospinal tract, the rubrospinal tract, the anterior corticospinal tract, and the tectospinal tract mixed with the fibers of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. We talked about the function of the lateral corticospinal tract and it containing the axon of upper motor neurons. And lastly, we discussed the motor type of the lateral corticospinal tract. I hope you have found this video to be beneficial, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. You can find my contact information in the video description. Thanks, and have a great day.